Just a couple steps from the service door that separated the kitchen from the, black, the back hallway, Hank was readying his bag when he heard a shriek that stopped him in his tracks. The shriek was so loud it felt like it radiated right through Hank's skin and drilled into his veins, concealing the blood that was trying to flow through them. The sound was very clearly came from the other side of the door. Hank was approaching. His whole body was quivering in response to the chilling sound. The shriek had been so piercing that it hadn't sounded human. But if the shriek was human, it had to come from his son. Hank stepped forward and cautiously peered through the round window set in the service door, tense, ready to react, and hanging back a couple feet from the door. Hank looked through the dirty glass. Because the kitchen's lights were so lame, Hank couldn't see much of anything through the glass. He had to get closer. The Toreto song had came from the screeching stop, and the tinking sounds in the arcade had been ended a few minutes before. Hank shook his head in the sudden grim silence and pressed in around him. He put his face up the door's glass. The silence gave away to another cardio noise. This time, screams intertwined with heavy gasps and clamoring chaos of taps and clanks and dunks. Hank's gaze looked towards the sound and he saw Hank let out his mule surprise and horror. His breath caught half in and half out, threatened to choke him. Gape gall at the prone body of his son. Staring at Carl's flopping feet and moving up in his ridden body, Hank's glance lay on something that just couldn't be possible, but it was. A small pink bright cupcake with a toothy mouth was chewing its way through Carl's face, or what was left of it. Carl! Hank breathed. The truth was, Carl no longer had a face. The cupcake was borrowed halfway into Carl's head. The bone structure of Carl's face was obliterated, and the cupcake was still going. Too strong to even begin to process what he's seeing, Yank, Hank yanked his gaze upward and tracked alongside stripes of the yellow, fuzzy, and orange material clinging in exposed metal. It ran over the bulge of more fuzzy yellow, past a, dirt, a dirty bin with the words, Let's eat, and it landed on an open orange beak, revealing two rows of vicious-looking teeth. Above the teeth and beak, Adrian white eyes were staring directly back at Hank. Hank screamed. Once he emptied all the coins vaults into of their booty, Jeff had filled his duffel bag with his loot and slung over his shoulders. Straining happily, Jeff had headed towards the front of the restaurant. Jeff had seen Hank hang toward the back hallway. He didn't know where Carl was, and at that moment he didn't care. He was in search of more spoils. Doing a quick exploration of the front hallway, poking his head briefly behind each of the closed doors, Jeff had found a security office at the end of the hall. When he spotted the old security camera equipment, he knew he could do some real damage in that room. Jeff had smiled wildly as he stepped into the unlit room. Its only light came from the security monitors. Eager to lay waste of the equipment, Jeff hadn't bothered swiping the light switch. He dropped the duffel bag on the floor and had landed on a statifying runk of clings, and a few tinkles as a halfway of coins escaped from the Canvas carrier. Jeff had started toward the desk and that held the monitors. He raised his crowbar in preparation for some more body-buzzing vandalism. Stepping behind the desk, Jeff had taken aim at the monitors, and that was when he heard the screams. It started with a screech that didn't even sound like it came from a person's mouth. A citrus silence, and then another set of screams, more silent than one long dawn scream. Instead of laying waste to them with his crowbar, Jeff looked at the monitors. His gaze whipped from one to the next. The last long scream had a deep and uneven. Jeff was sure it had to come from Hank. Hank? Jeff leaned towards and looked at the monitors. He scanned all the in interior views. There, on a dining room camera feed, Hank could have been sprinting through the half-open space. He was running flat out, as if something chased by a whole horde of gowls. Rat. Jeff watched as Hank disappeared from the dining room feed. Jay's, Jeff's gaze shifted to the unto a monitor. Sure enough, there was Hank pounding down the main hallway. He was coming towards the office, but wait. On the monitor, Hank stopped and looked back be behind his shoulder. His mover was spontaneous. He was clearly scared out of his mind. As Jeff continued watching the monitor, Hank flung open one of the doors that lined the hall. One about midway down, Hank dashed towards the door and disappeared from view. Jeff frowned and looked at the other monitors. None of them provided a view of what was behind the door. Hank had gone through. It was a ply closet. Jeff knew this is from his cursory check of the area. What the hell are you doing? 
Jeff asked as Hank he couldn't see or hear him. When he when he broken out all the poster frame glass, Hank thought he destroyed the frosted glasses set in the, the door. He wasn't sure why he hadn't, but now he was glad he had left the door alone. Hank was hoping this one was going to prevent him from having his face eaten or something else. Hank wasn't sure what kind of enclosure he was in. A closet? A room? The most wheezy bit of light from the hallway swooped through the front glass of the door, and the lights revealed lit it more than the doorframe and doorknob. Everything else around Hank was so black that it was like a void of light had mass and substance. It felt like the mass was crowding around Hank, attempting to wrap him in a less than friendly hug. The sounds of Hank's wheezing breath filled the darkness. He could smell the reek of his own sweat and the stink of his own breath. Smell like a stale coffee he wished around before coming to the pizzeria. Outside the door, a shout reached down the hall. Hank? It was Jeff's voice. And that guy couldn't, didn't sound particularly scared. His voice had lensed with more curiosity than fear. Hank exhaled in relief. If Jeff was coming down the hallway calling Hank's name, the big yellow bird thing couldn't have been nearby. Jeff wasn't the sharpest tool in the toolbox, but he wasn't stupid enough to be calling out like that if he was facing a threat. Hank? Hank sh Jeff's Jeff? Hank shouted. Hank! Jeff responded. What are you doing? His voice was a little faint. He was a little in ways down the hall. A force of two was better than a force of one. Together, they could get out of the building. Hank grabbed a doorknob. He tried to turn it. It wouldn't budge. Hank jingled the knob. Forcefully, it held fast. He threw his contrarian bulk against the door. It held up in its wave, no longer thinking about Jeff or anyone else. Or anything else. Hank was now single-mindedly intent of getting out of the room he was stuck in. He tried barring the door with his body again, and that got him nothing but a sore shoulder. Hank turned to look at the outer space-like vacuum behind him. He quelled and turned back the door. He began swooping at the wall at the flat of his hand. Come on, Hank muttered. There was a light switch, but there wasn't. Hank groping hands found nothing but a rough wall. Even when he stepped into the right and to the left, a retail jingle came from behind Hank's head. Not a switch, he thought. A pull cord. Hank reached up and felt around, his hand enclosing the end of the heavy string. He gasped and pulled. Nothing. Come on, you stupid. Hank began as he yanked again. This time, the cord did its job. A single bar of light bulb came up. Hank blew out a pent-up breath. Yeah, he said. Now all he had to do was find something in the room that could break the door of glass. Hank turned and, like, and looked right at the pair of glowing eyes. These eyes didn't belong to an ugly, lethal-looking chick, but they didn't belong to anything cuddly either. Hank was looking up at another toothy Phil face. This face, topped with two bent rabbit ears, was missing most of its fur. Its bright eyes were surrounded by a mass of metal and exposed wires. Hank screamed yet again. Just a few feet from the closet Hank's calls from had came from, Jeff, who had walked slowly, lunged at the heavy duffel bag, froze when he heard Hank scream. Jeff looked towards the door. The first scream was followed by a second one. Then a third, the screams like devoured serpents reached out from behind the door. The door rattled and then smack. A silhouette hand hit the door's frosted glass. Jeff's breathing caught on his throat when he watched the hand leave the occupant smear across the glass. The smear struck downward above the hand and the hand dropped from view. Hank wasn't screaming anymore, Jeff realized. When the hand disappeared from the glass, all Jeff could hear was a faint gurgle. Then silence. Jeff's crowbar slipped from his hand. It hit the linen tone with a clank, and the rebound down the hall and then seemed to boomerang back at Jeff. His glance still ran to the door. Jeff adjusted the duffel bag strap that cut into his shoulder. It felt like the bag was getting heavier by the minute. Jeff took a tentative step forward to close the door. Hank, he whispered. Hank wasn't sure why he said Jeff wasn't sure why he said Hank's name. He didn't know what had happened to Hank, but he knew it wasn't good. Still, maybe Hank was injured and needed help. Jeff shuffled toward another half step, but he stopped when the door shimmered ever so slightly. Jeff locked his gaze at the door. He looked back down the hallway towards the office. Should he retreat and lock himself in that room? He looked on down the hall. Should he make a run for it? Head from the main doors. Jeff's brain was chained by a blood engorged veins that pulsed mainly in tune in his hard crackled pace. He couldn't think. The door began to open. Inch by excruciating inch, more and more mysterious murk was revealed. Hank? Jeff asked. Hank did not appear, but something else did. Jeff felt like the 
the floor beneath him turned into a weighing deck of boat cotton hurricane. When he saw what was stepping out of the hallway, reality folded itself. Jeff was looking at the oversized, diplomatic mass of a robotic bunny. Jeff tried to process the torn, dirty fur, the exposed metal beneath it, and the blue bent ears. And as Jeff looked at the bunny, it turned towards him. The bunny had blazing white eyes set in the exposed metal ravaging face dominated by an impossible white mass of horrifying teeth. Those eyes were looking right at Jeff. Jeff's brain, overcome as it was, managed to send a message to Jeff's feet. Run, his brain command. Jeff sprung around and shot like a rocket down the hall. Back towards the office, the heavy duffel bag slammed against Jeff's hip over and over as he ran. The pounding hurt, and yet Jeff couldn't bring himself to drop the bag. He kept launching on it as he gulped down the hall. He could ever been thinking clink of the coins hitting the floor begin behind him, but even that didn't discourage him to hanging on the bag. He clenched himself, even if he rushed down the office and slammed the door behind him. Jeff fumbled with the door lock, eventually clicking it in place. He stared at the door as he finally dropped the duffel bag. More coins spilled over the floor with a chatter. Jeff didn't care. Looking wildly around him, Jeff spotted the landscape fall on the shelf behind the desk. He dashed toward it and snatched up the receiver. He immediately started punching in 911 as he put the phone in his head. And his, Jeff pulled the phone from his hair. He winced and stared in retreat. The nightmarish clamor of children's laughter was blasting from the phone. The laughter was a high pitch and frenzy. Jeff dropped the receiver back to his cradle. And he looked over the door, it was still closed, and Jeff couldn't see anything through the glass. He turned his attention to the CT, the CCT monitors. His glance immediately landed on the exterior feed that was focused on the back of the building. Jeff saw his truck still sitting next to the rotting docks. Max remained in the cab with Bonesy. For an instant, Jeff's heart rate slow. That truck was safely. All he had to do was get to... Movement on another monitors caught Jeff's attention. He looked at it. Gargling directly back at Jeff, or rather, at the camera that feed this monitor, were the blue bunny and the yellow chick with a sharp yellow beak. Although the chick's face was a better shape than the rabbit's, it didn't look any less threatening. Both the chick and bunny continued to study the camera. Jeff couldn't feel them looking past the lance, down the wires, directly at him. He took a step back from the monitors. At the same time, the chick and the monitor moved. Jeff stepped forward again, leaning in to see the monitor more clearly. Jeff watched the chick bent over and crouch down. It was right in front of the vent, covering low down the hall. Jeff felt like his brows bunch as he tried to figure out what was the chick was. The chick wretches the vent oak cover of the wall. Then she held a plate out in front of him, of her. Jeff blinked. He hadn't been noticing the plate until the bright pink cupcake with buck teeth hop off the plate and disappear into the now open vent. What in the... Jeff began, metallic banging and clanging of sounds from the building. It was muffled in distance, but it stretched out in reach, like fingers, into the office. Jeff looked at the walls around him. The sound was coming from within them. He returned his attention to the monitors, urging his brain to help him out. What was going? Jeff looked at the walls again, and the banging continued. Then he got it. No, Jeff said. The banging began getting louder. The cupcake was moving fast. Jeff stepped away from the desk and quickly scanned the room, his glance going left and right, up down. Was there a... The glance had on the vent covering the wall. Jeff stared at it as the banging volume went up another couple of notches. Getting close, Jeff thought. He immediately dropped to his knees. He ducked underneath the canners and looked at the vent cover. He had to find a way to block. A noise clinkling bang. Sp Jeff spotted bright pink on the other side of the vent cover. Instantaneously, Jeff braced himself against the staring metal. It flashed against his shoulder. Jeff went up and looked between the slides. He could see a fury of bright pink through the dark gray opening. The office enclosure and bolts caught the white of gashing razor-sharp teeth, snapping viciously at the scattered metal. Jeff hiccuped several panicked breaths, trying to brace the rubber, the rubber sole hicking boots against the dusky limum. Jeff attempted to press harder against the vent covers. The dust, however, created a surface as slick as ice, and Jeff's feet slipped away from him. The teeth against the metal slate sounded like metal meeting in power saw. The high, tiny sounds was drilling into Jeff's eardrums. Whimpering, he tried to repaint his feet, but they once again slid across the floor. The vent cover shuddered, and the cover of it bobbed loose from the wall. Jeff wailed. He squeezed his eyes shut and shifted his shoulders to press against the loose end. Another clamorous slam and silence. 
his breathing still ragged, his pulse pounding. Jeff opened his eye and looked through the slides. He saw nothing. Jeff tilted his head and looked hard in the air, shift glooms. The trunk behind the vent cover was empty. Angston howled loudly. He pulled his shoulder from the vent covering and brought a shaky hand to his face, wiping away the sweat that matted his head to his skin and ran down his neck. Weakly, Jeff inverted himself to his feet. He took another deep breath as he started to exhale. He turned back towards the desk. Jeff froze. The breathing stopped mid hell. The office door was open. Feeling like his eyeballs were vibrating in his head, Jeff strained looked through the door open doorway. At the same time, he tried to reason out why the door was open. He had locked it, hadn't he? And even if he hadn't, who had opened it? Jeff's gaze whipped around the office. He was the only one in but his attention snapped at the filling cabinets of opposite walls and the single upright locker next to the breaker box and the wall opposite the door. Could something small have gotten into? That disturbing thought lit a fire under Jeff's teeth. He hustled towards the open door. Hesitant next to the door jam, equally afraid of what might be hiding in the office and what might be lurking outside of it, Jeff inched his head toward, through the door opening. Once he had his head far enough onto the hall to see, he looked along the length of the hall in both directions. He saw nothing. Jeff couldn't believe his luck, but he wasn't going to waste it. He immediately dashed out the hallway and started towards the dum 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 He turned into the statue. What was that? The voice, it seemed to be bouncing every which way at once, it was a cross between a chant and a monotone song. It was a teasing voice, but not a nice teasing. The tone was one of a bully would use. Taunting. Torturing. Jeffrey fought his action plan. Maybe running through the hall wasn't such a great idea at the moment. He turned and started back to the office. As soon as Jeff took a step through, the office door whipped shut with a resounding vroom. Jeff recoiled, but he recovered quickly. Rushing forward, he grabbed the doorknob and tried to turn it. The knob wouldn't, open, wouldn't move. Jeff shook it. The knob wouldn't give at all. It was locked. And worse, down the hall towards the lobby, a tinkling skinner sound was leading to Jeff's direction. A scrap and a clink and cascade of clinks. Jeff knew exactly what that sound was. He was hearing the coins that was leaking from his duffel bag when he was running. And they were screwing through the hall. And now they were being moved by footsteps. Shuffle. Clink. Scrap. Cather. Something was moving the coins across the linen tome. Dibbity dum dum dibbity da. Each note was an eerie little daily drill into Jeff's body, like each tone was one of a billion nanobots boring in in his pores. Jeff's whole body began to tremble. He could even hear his teeth chatter. Jeff whipped away from the office door. He took off down the hall, away from the lobby towards the red exit at the hallway's end. A full gallop when he reached the emergency exit room, Jeff slammed into the crash bar and bounced back. As he shifted his feet towards his balance, he heard a rapid pulse of footsteps wheezing towards him. Jeff turned, just in time to see a flash of a pirate hook arching through the air, hanging directly at his face. Jeff opened his mouth to scream, but the sound was cut off before it could even begin.